Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy, and development in Nigeria and around the world. Why is the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission investigating Peter Wadele, the first governor of River State in this dispensation? Peter Wadele was the governor of River State between 1999 and 2007. Why is the EFCC suddenly opening the books on Peter Odele? Has it anything to do with the ongoing fight of supremacy between the incumbent governor of River State, Simi Fubara, and the former governor of River State and now the minister of the FCT, Yeso Mike. That is what we want to find out in this analysis. What is really going on? This is because people are asking, is it because Dr. Odile, if you remember, was among the stakeholders who witnessed the signing of the resolution in the, that was brokered by President Bola Tinubu at the presidential villa. And there were reports and indications that Peter Odile was not really very comfortable with the whole arrangement, but he flowed along. And in recent time, there had been constant presence of Peter Wadele with Simi Fubara. Is that what this is all about? But first of all, let us understand what is going on. Let us look at the reason, the, the, the substance of the issue at stake. Now, according to the report, that there is, an, there is anxiety in some quarters in River State because the Economic and Financial Crime Commission is set to reopen the books to probe the former governor of River State, Dr. Peter Audley. Now, the renewed probe, according to the Vanguard, is coming after more than 16 years when the anti-graft agency had, had asked Audley to answer some questions over 100 billion Naira fraud, alleged fraud. Now, it will be recalled that uh, Audley had obtained perpetual injunction towards the end of his eight years tenure in office in 2007. Now he's being asked to provide answers to how such a large sum of money found its way into his private account or was expended by his administration. You know, the, the former governor of River State, Peter Audley, obtained a perpetual injunction to protect himself from that allegation, but it appears that that allegation is being revisited. Now, the former governor's travel began during the era of President Olusegun Obasanjo when Odile, uh, against all odds, decided to run for the presidency of the country and was the top contender for the People's Democratic Party's presidential ticket. And it was this allegation that they used in stopping him by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission. As I said in previous video, 
when I used to remind people how powerful the governor of River State used to be and is still supposed to be, that Pete Audley was so powerful as governor that when Obasanjo was leaving, after eight years of Obasanjo, Pete Audley's fellow Sultana too was in a pole position to replace Obasanjo. And he nearly got the position until Nuhu Rebadu, who was then the EFCC chairman, came up with these allegations against Odele, which forced Obasanjo to change his mind and adopted the late Umaru Musa Yaradua, the then former governor of Castina State, to be his preferred candidate as the PDP presidential candidate. Now, the former chairman of EFCC, in fact, he's the pioneer chairman of the EFCC, Nuhuri Badu, is now the national security advisor to President Bola Metinobu. At that time, Nuhuri Badu had arrested Chibi Kerotibi Amechi, who was the speaker of the River State House of Assembly to give them to extract, they wanted to extract information on the financial transactions of Peter Audley as governor. Because throughout the time that Peter Audley was governor, Amechi was the speaker of the River State House of Assembly. However, in 2008, Audley approached a federal high court and was granted a perpetual injunction stopping the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, its chairman, and other operatives from investigating the financial books of the River State government, including himself or any official of the state on the subject matter. Now, after over 16 years, EFCC now has come up to say that it was beaming its searchlight on alleged, in, a, in Dr. Peter Odele's alleged involvement of 100 billion naira fraud or mismanagement of uh, river state resources. It is, it is curious how EFCC has gotten back to this matter after 16 years. And the first question to ask, has the EFCC vacated that particular perpetual injunction? Because the last time I checked, there had not been any indication that EFCC has gone to court to vacate that perpetual injunction, not to investigate Peter Odele. In any case, Peter Delay's governorship period was also the same period that uh, the president, Bola Metinubu, was governor. So Peter Delay is in the, in the same class with, uh, uh, with uh, Bola Metinubu because both of them were governors within during the same period. They were members of the Governor's Forum and what have you. They brought to the class of 2000 and 1999 to 2007 governors. Remember that shortly after Bola Metinubu was sworn in, the governors of that class, those who were governors between 1999 and 2007, including uh, former governor of uh, Abia State, Ojo Sokalu, including uh, uh, Sule Lamido, and all others like that, who were in that class of 1999 to 2007. They all paid homage to Bola Metinubu because they are in the same class. Interestingly, that class Obasanjo classified all of them are very corrupt. All of them, according to the reports, 
in the in the hands of Obasanjo, which he wrote in his book, My Watch. He said none of them is free of corruption, including Bola Metinubo. All of them is believed to have files in the EFCC. All of them have petitions against them. Most of them are being prosecuted. Some of them, their prosecution is still ongoing. That of Ojo Zokalo readily comes to mind. The, the uh, Sule Lamido, former governor of Jigawa State, readily comes to mind. And there are so many like that. And uh, the issue is, what is EFCC looking for? Is it really looking for getting justice for Rivers people? Or is it after political vendetta against those perceived to be the enemies of the administration? But nobody can accuse Peter Odele of being the enemy of Bola Metinubu's government. Peter Odele had, be, had been a perfect gentleman since he left office. He never bothered himself about how he was treated by Amechi, who he helped to become whatever he eventually became in River State. He accepted his fate and went underground. He wasn't involved in politics. He was able to withstand uh, all the things that uh, Yeso Wike did. And he had been also very quiet Should it be that Abuja want to muzzle Odele to stop giving support to Fubara? Or what is this what, what does this mean? This idea of uh, going back to investigate Peter Odele. Only time will tell. But the fact remains that he who goes to equity must go with clean hands. I also understand that EFCC said that they want to open all the books. Are they really sure they want to open all the books? Because they should go and read Obasanjo's list of corrupt people. And they will not, I hope all the people that Obasanjo mentioned in his book, my watch, that they will also include them as they go after Peter Odele. Because Peter Odele is not the only one in that class. Even the president himself know that in the list that Obasanjo has, even himself cannot escape the being investigated. But of course now he has immunity. But the important thing is, let those who are president of Nigeria, who happens to reach the office of the president, let them st stop this tendency of using war against corruption as, as a bargaining chip to deal with their political opponents. It has not helped the war against corruption. It has not helped Nigeria to get at the root of underdevelopment of this country, which is hinged on corruption itself. Because if not for corruption, Nigeria would have been as developed, if not more than developed, compared to Dubai and every other place you can think of. What has weighed this country down is mismanagement of the war against corruption. And it appears this administration has not learned 
even though this is not surprising. Bola Tinubu has not complete, he didn't campaign to come and fight war against corruption in Nigeria. The only candidate in that election that showed commitment to fight war against corruption and to live exemplary, exemplary life that will force even his cabinet members not to engage in corrupt practices was Peter Obi of the Labour Party. All the other candidates were just dancing around the issue of corruption, even if they mention it at all. That is the way it is. If you want to fight corruption, you have to fight it holistically. You, you, can, you are not only seen, you are not only saying that you are fighting corruption, you must be seen to be fighting it. And everybody will be able to see that you are fight for it. It's altruistic. It's not inspired by political vendetta as we are seeing today. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, God will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.